only nine minutes late. <laughs> and we started 15 minutes early. <laughs> Isn't that funny how that works? Mm-hmm. Welcome to the, the the show. I'm kidding. I always call it the show, but um, I, I guess we could call this the, the Ryan Owen, Rachel Ryan show. Ryan and I, we were discussing prior to this how we got connected and we couldn't remember. Um, we're thinking it's one of potentially three people and we got connected originally through Instagram. We've known each other for, well, via the interwebs, via, let's see here, about a year. And yes. I am not quite sure what exactly piqued my interest in following Ryan, but I think it was essentially he's in the behavioral analysis field and that came through really quickly on his channel. And the more I've gotten to know him, the more I've found that I've had a, a significant interest in his field. And that is one reason why we've stayed connected. And I wanted to bring him on today because I want to talk about that. And a couple of things we'll be talking about are behavioral science and also a podcast that he and his team started <clears throat> started called Why We Do What We Do. Yeah. We are going to start off with 21 questions, though, because that's always fun to do. So, Ryan, are you ready? Yes. This is the only part I'm nervous for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. When I say Sudoku, you say. You said Sudoku. Sudoku. <laughs> Sudoku. I thought I heard stucco. <laughs> when I say numbers. Numbers, okay. When I say crosswords, you say. Something I also don't play. Okay. <laughs> What's your go-to mountain to get a good climb in? Uh, locally, it is Hunter Creek Trail. Okay. I don't know what, technically it's on Mount Rose, I guess, but it's like 10 minutes away. Post-it note or digital? Digital. Well, both. Can I say both? Sure. Okay, both. All right. I literally said digital and I looked down and there's like five sticky notes at the bottom of my table. <laughs> <laughs> Orderly or chaos? Uh, organized chaos. I like chaos over anything. Go to snack on the road. Ooh, something salty and chocolate, like a mix, like some chips, and then something just like everything horrible for you. I guess if that makes sense. It does. I just gotta have like I gotta have one of each. Who would you trade jobs with for one day? Trade jobs with. I would love to know what some of the top CEOs like days are like. So the Zuckerbergs, the Bezos, the Musks. Like I would just like to know like what like one day looks like you know mm -hmm. That's guilty, all. okay guilty pleasure uh friends the tv show okay yes <laughs> 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 when i clarify that one <laughs> when i say 2018 you say <laughs> get shit done <laughs> first job on the books Ooh, uh, so I worked a ton with my dad, but that was just like learning how to work and getting a worth ethic. The first one of the books was actually a movie store. Okay. Like, and like fun fact, it was a movie store and a tanning salon because it was a small town and you had to diversify your revenue. Was that in Totem Pole? <laughs> Totem Pole, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm not from Nevada, man. I'm trying over here. I'm trying. Nobody knows it, really. It's all right. That was a pretty good. I'm surprised you got it close. Like, that's good. Uh, one tool that helps you stay ultra organized. I use two things, if I can say two. Uh, Asana, which is like a project management app for like larger things. But then my day to day is uh, Habitica. Have you heard of that game or that like site? So it's like role-playing uh, games for your life. So you put in all the things you need to do, the things you like want to do more of, and you're like you earn points, you can buy stuff. It's super nerdy. Okay. It's amazing. Okay. Oh no, what did I just do? Don't do that. Whatever I just did. Okay. How do you like your coffee? Uh, black and from Onyx right now. I'm really on an Onyx kick. I saw that on one of your other interviews. Hmm. Genre of music. Uh, primarily, like, hard rock, 
hardcore sort of stuff. But like, I never listen to that around people. That's just like my music, my time. Favorite hat? Ooh, uh, I got this one I just recently got that says uh, in Portuguese. It says like Donese, I think is how you say it. I probably just butcher that, but it just kind of means like this casual, like oh, whatever. Um, and so that's my new favorite right now. Biggest misconception about Nevada? <laughs> uh, it's not just Vegas. There's a lot more to it. How do you a get a whole lot more? How do you get your news for the day? Either variety of Twitter, Facebook, or uh, feeds like RSS feeds that I've set up into my mail account. Pet peeve. Ooh, tapping on the shoulder like someone taps me drives me nuts. Favorite color. <laughs> Favorite what? Color. Uh, I'm really into uh, black or red. I have to go with black first. How do you unwind? Uh, usually the gym, if that counts. And it's like in the morning. So my thing is like, set the stage and just like, I totally, like I don't talk to anybody. My rule is like, don't talk to anybody at the gym. I've been in the same gym for four years and I haven't talked to a single person, but I recognize everybody in there. <laughs> that's, that's just my time to unwind. Okay. That's completely backwards, but completely awesome. Everyone's, yeah, yeah. everyone's got their own thing. Well, or this guilty pressure of, like, friends and just, like, binge-watching some friends. Like, that happens, too. There you go. There you go. And I'm going to start off with your, your title. And the reason I'm starting off with that is because, essentially, to set the stage for this most majority of this conversation, you're background is based around the term behavioral scientist. <clears throat> Everything that you do is about behavior. You don't really go a day without talking about it on social. So my question is, is what is a creative behavioral scientist? Because that's got to be one of the coolest titles I've heard in a long time. And I'm curious to know what that means in the world of Rhino. So I just made it up, like full disclosure. Um, <laughs> and so the, so here's how our field works. You get into like an undergraduate program and you usually stumble across it. It's behavioral or behavior analysis is like the actual field. Now it's got a lot of misconceptions. Um, so you go to grad school, you learn about those misconceptions, you learn about the tools, and then you come out usually certified as a board certified behavior analyst. So BCBA is the term. So there's a lot of people in the internet world, that if you looked up BCBA, like that would lead you to like what I was formally trained in. However, the science part and the BCBA part can be kind of misconstrued sometimes in the public's eye as to like what exactly they do. Um, and so, I like the behavioral science term because it kind of shows and, and encompasses like everything that has to do with behavior, which for us would be uh, anything that a person does. So literally everything's on the table. BCBA is uh, that term um, is set up for that as well, but it's largely been, I would say, influenced by like the funding streams that are primarily paying for the services that a BCBA typically delivers. And a lot of those are in autism, dis developmental disabilities, mental health, um, all really great work. But that term kind of gets misconstrued, like not, not misconstrued. That term gets uh, just kind of branded as only working in those areas. And since I work in areas outside of that, the behavioral science term fits better. So that's the logic there. And then about two years ago, I got interested in uh, anything that had to do with reading, writing, video, and like those sort of mediums. And so um, the, that's largely called the creative world in my world. And I like that term, but I don't think it does it justice, right? Like there's a lot of people that go get labeled under that. So anyhow, I was like, I need to smash these together because I'm interested in both and maybe it'll differentiate in the behavior analysis market that uh, I'm interested in both of those. So that's your like long story long as like how that came up. Just straight up, made it up, threw it up there to differentiate in my niche and market of like how I'm different. That makes sense. So when you are having that conversation in the field at conferences and you're surrounded by the people who are in your field, do they give you a look like you have two heads or how does that, how does that conversation, um, what comes from that conversation? There's, 
there's largely the academic professionals, um, kind of, it's a different value set and a different day to day. And so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to them sometimes and laying it out makes a little bit more sense. Um, the folks that are like working on the ground, um, and delivering services and such, it takes a little less explanation. And part of that is, is like, like you said, there's like not a day that it goes by that I'm not on social media doing something like that. And so I've hit it pretty hard, um, on like distributing, like, this is what I mean by it indirectly, you know, by pushing all these different media, uh, out there. So, okay. So when you're walking around with the camera at these conferences, what, what are people, are they asking about what it is you're doing and then you explain it to them? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you've noticed that when you just walk around with like a camera in front of your face and people are like, (laughs) and they look at you like you have, yeah. 80% 80% of people are looking at you like, what is wrong with you? Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, I get that. Uh, it depends on the type of conference. So either some of them, like, they are communities that know that, like, I'm kind of coming in there and I'll be, uh, I hit them up ahead of time saying, like, hey, I'm going to run around with this thing. And it's kind of distributed beforehand. Or um, there's some of them that are just much larger organizations I'm a part of. And so I turn it on and off depending on, like, where I'm at. Uh, especially if there's certain film restrictions and such uh, with some of the organizations. So it's different. It's one of two, either like totally weird looks all the time, or like I'm only turning it on and off sometimes in these bigger conferences and it's with people who kind of know me. So it's like a lot less weird looks. I have a feeling you're going to become the person that people are going to know at conferences based on literally your hat, outfit, and camera, and they're not even going to have to see your face. (laughs) <laughs> they will literally know you because of that calling card image that you are that you're currently creating for yourself, which I think yeah. is is a really good thing. Yeah. Yeah. One of the distinct things I remember over the last like uh, kind of conference round over last fall was people just like looking at me that I've worked with in the past, just like, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> just give me time. Like, I will figure it out. This is a heavy deep dive once again, mm-hmm. um, and, it's, and it's a three-part question. You've met your heroes. The names of those heroes are, and I believe that they deserve some recognition here, and I hope that I do not butcher their names. William H- Heward? Yep, Heward. Timothy Heron? Heron, yep. Heron? Heron. And John Cooper? Yeah, Coop. Is Coop. Coop. for sure. I remember you gave him a shout out in one of your vlogs. You were like, is that you? Yeah, yeah. And you turned around and it was, you were almost <laughs> starstruck by that moment. Yes. They wrote a book titled Applied, Bena- Applied Behavior Analysis. I think <clears throat> that that was perhaps the first book that you had to purchase for your master's course and you were getting your master's in Florida. Yeah. <clears throat> So for those who don't know who these guys are, they are to behavioral science as Steve Wozniak is to Apple. And <laughs> Ryan, met you met these guys in, I believe it was September 2017. Mm-hmm. That's a really big deal. So first off, how did you make that happen? So, yeah, so the book is like the one that's most known across graduate programs. And so everybody's read it. And I stumbled across it in my second undergraduate course, actually. I was lucky to catch it early. And it is, like, the, like, central source for the majority of what our field's about. And so that's why it's important. Now, it's labeled as, like, the white book and, like, the main one. And so everybody talks about it. And I was taught to network and meet as many people as you possibly can. And, excuse me, um, and so these guys were just folks that was like, I want to meet these people as soon as I can. And it took eight or nine years to find them all in one spot. I had met, um, Bill Heward before numerous times, but I never saw them all together. And that's the only conference they all get together at regularly, at least. And so it was just kind of an aligning of the, the stars. It took quite a few years. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's numerous heroes, and they were folks that 
just took forever to get together. And like, you know, all four of us like find each other. So it was pretty fun. And they were up for me running around with like the vlog rig in front of them too, which is super cool. Okay, cool. <laughs> what was that experience like when you, when you first encountered them and what came out of that conversation? Yeah, so I used to get super nervous in meeting those sort of folks, but over the last like year or two, especially as I played around with video and just kind of gotten over like putting yourself out there and like you're you're just gonna be out there everywhere. Um, it's gotten easier. So the I don't know. It's uh, it's awesome. It's like I've achieved something. Enjoy the moment, but then as soon as it's over, it's like okay, like what's next? Like I'm always in that mentality of like. Ooh, what's what's the next step you know so in that case it was okay they were cool with me recording some video how do i use that and incorporate it in like a good light for the film and so that's the edit that you saw for example awesome now we're going to dive into your podcast which is becoming a little bit more famous <laughs> yeah <Hopefully. laughs> I, I, I see i see your podcast within about 36 from that 36 months from now blowing up and I say that based on the amount of conferences you're going to, the level of activity that your entire team is putting into, not the level, of, well, blah, blah, blah. the level of energy your entire team is putting into this project that you have, you've all gotten together and you said, let's do this, let's, let's make this happen because there's all this information out there, but it's not in one place where people can drive a conversation from it and you guys decided to be that source which is really cool so without further ado the podcast is called why we do what we do and i am just going to admit right now i am in over my head and <laughs> um it's but i am fascinated by each and every single episode that you guys record sincerely truly i'm not just saying that and the one thing that I want to highlight here that I think is super important is that you all have the, the entire team, which I know of about five people on the team, one of them being the host, Abraham. And then you have two other people that are behind the scenes doing a lot of the writing. I'm completely yeah. not remembering one of the names right now, but, um, yes, we have, we have Miranda that helps a lot as well as, uh, Shane Spiker, uh, as another, and they're, they're both about to start getting behind the mic more, which is really cool too. That, okay, that's awesome. So my question is, you all have yeah. your bachelor's degree, but you all also have a master's degree. So mm -hmm. how have you? How are you going to continue advancing your education in the field to continue bringing light to the subject? So, well, yeah, that's kind of a good question. I like that. So thanks for all the kind words, first of all. Now, the... Uh, the, like where that project came out of is an online group of people that just like to share knowledge and advance their learning essentially. So it's a bunch of nerdy folks in our field like myself and we all come together and that project slowly came out of that after about three years. And so I think we've kind of built a community around sharing current research and what's going on. Now there's so much out there that you can't keep up all the time. So we're kind of filling into our own niches with we're filling in our own niches within the field as well. So uh, I guess it's a lot of communication as to knowing who's keeping up with what and then making sure that those people are speaking on topics that we're going to talk about in the future. So there's somewhere it's just like, I can't talk about this. We need to bring somebody on or like have somebody else talk about this. Or I need to like read an immense amount of research and I don't have time to do that. Um, and then part of that podcast actually forces you to just stay up with the literature too. Like, I don't want to talk about something that I haven't read about recently. So we, that inherently helps you kind of keep it up with it too. You know? Yeah. And one thing I noticed in the conversations that you and Abraham are having with each other within the dialogue is you'll say, Oh, I recently researched about this or recently, or I research, or I recently researched about that. Do you, do the writers come up with the, like the weekly topics and then you and Abraham are like, okay, now we got to research and, and do this because this is going to be the content that we're going to put out for the next episode. Yeah. So the, the process is literally, if you have an idea, go into Dropbox paper and you write it down and we have just a bunch of topics and it's out of control. There's like 200 of them listed in there now. Okay. And then about a month or 
a week before we're going to record, Abraham and I just say, which ones we want to put on the slate for like talking about and do our research independently. If we know we've worked with each other for eight or nine years on and off on projects. So we're pretty good at knowing where each other's skill sets start and stop. So we'll, we'll usually text the night before we're recording and saying, Hey, that's all I've got. And you need to fill the rest or we need to like rethink this completely. So that's kind of, I guess how the process goes. It's very, it's very last minute um, and a little unorganized and I'm surprised how it works sometimes, <laughs> but <laughs> we're going to, we're, we're fixing that. So year one is like season one for us and season two will be a revamp. So we're always recording ahead, I guess. So we're anywhere from four to 15 episodes ahead that we've recorded. So there's not too much pressure there. Okay. And so we're going to keep it ahead. And that process is entire, entirely changed. Okay. Um, but that's how it's currently set up. Okay, awesome. Really quickly, um, if someone wants to learn more and tune in, where can they find you and when do new episodes get released? Every Wednesday, 6 a.m. Pacific, unless uh, one of us are behind in some capacity, which is oftentimes me. So that's when they should be released. Uh, we like to keep it consistent. Now, the... Uh, who was the other part? Oh, where to find it. <laughs> yeah. So where to find it. We should be everywhere. Um, that Like typical podcast feeds, whatever people listen to. There's a lot of like smaller apps out there that are really useful. And some people find like their own kind of niches, I guess, in there. So it should be everywhere. I know that many of the Google and like Android ones we kick to a little bit later. I don't know why. It's something with the magical tubes of the internet that I don't understand. I can't figure it out. So I'm a droid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it should be released then. Okay. Um, yeah. A very, <laughs> a very heavy hitting topic here. And it's about self-awareness. I, I got hit with self-awareness halfway through 2014. It hit me in a moment when I was not expecting it. And mm -hmm. I was alone and options for more reasons than I can count, but is there a reasoning behind why some of us find self-awareness and others simply disregard the process? Ooh, I don't think I could do like a yes or no, like a hard, <laughs> hard fact on this. It's a super good question, but like pulling from the science and knowledge I have, it's like, ugh. Um, if I had to like say one thing, I think it's that we're our culture isn't designed to teach it super early on and it seems like the earlier we're taught to really look at things like that the more ingrained they are so numbers reading right like i'm gonna get very uh simple but those core skills right we hit those very early on and they stick with us um they can diminish over time right like you need to practice things we all know that you need to continue to practice things so this could be exactly in the same light of that but I would say it's we need to work on it sooner. Um, but those are the sort of questions, I guess, I would be very interested in tackling from a research perspective down later in my career. We'll see where I'm at. Because um, I don't think it's a... I wish I knew the answer. And I don't know if anyone knows, like, uh, this is how it works, you know? I wasn't expecting you to have a, a direct answer for it, but I was, I was thinking there might be kind of a couple of different books that people could read for how yeah. the process begins and and how you can immerse yourself into it because it it, is, sure. it is super overwhelming yeah so one that i like so i'm gonna always be biased to behavior analysis research um there's there's two that i would say so there's one called the behavior and it's called the self and perspective taking i'll send you a link afterwards and it gives you a framework of how perspective taking, which the idea is that is how you, that is your root of how you're going to look at um, yourself and work on the self awareness, right? So perspective taking is one. The next one would be there's this book by Susan Susan Schneider called The Science of Consequences, and so that's a very intro to understanding how to everything that goes into behavior, the genetics, the history, individual history, the culture, um, all those sort of things come together. So I look at it as like, understand how to look at perspectives, understand why we do what we do. Um, and then from there, 
my last thing would be just measure things and track things since I'm in the science world. You don't have to do that, but I think that's a crucial component. So if I could, it would be take those things and try to teach those things early on to kind of bring it full circle to my answer. Okay. It, yeah, it, it's not something that you can deliver in a package. And I, no. I, I, I bet if it were, it would be worth a lot of money and people would be lined <laughs> up till no tomorrow for it. It would be down in the history books forever. It would. It, it sincerely would, all jokes aside. Yeah, I mean, people like Gary Vee, we both follow him. Uh, he'll say it's the most important thing, but he doesn't know how to teach it. <laughs> Nobody does. A gal that I love listening to, the, the gal who I told you about the other day, Mel Robbins, for mm-hmm. her, it was it was the idea of the NASA rocket ship. And she was like, that's it. And that's how she came up with her five-second rule. Um, because I'm bringing it up, I'll actually put a link in the description below as well because I, yeah. I think that she can really be uh, a great source for people. Who are your mentors? I've got a community of, I kind of look at it as like based on function. So in business, it's different than behavior analysis, and it's different when it comes to um, media and things like that, right? So I had early on mentors that really focused on helping me in those various areas, but I've grown out of that into this more kind of community sort of thing. So largely, I bounce my ideas off others, and then before I do them, and I get community feedback in those areas. So does that make sense? It's never one person now. It's like three or four people are kind of my core in media, behavior analysis, business. I'm like, hey, I think I'm heading this way. What do you think? Mm-hmm. And then they really guide me on those things. I've been asking this question to every single person that I've done this with and that I've, um, that I've interviewed for this series. And every single person has mentioned at least three people. And there's been probably three people now who have said at least 10 to 15 people. And I think that that's a good thing because our perceptions are always changing and we're always growing as as people, especially in our fields. And Mm -hmm. we can make a career change too. So I I agree that it shouldn't be one specific person, but rather kind of a a plethora of people. The only hard part is, is keeping up with it all. Cause when you're, when you have a list of how many people and you're like, Hey, what are they doing? What are they doing? And then you're like, crap, I need to focus. So yep, yeah, yep. just making sure you're staying on top of it all, which is not easy to do. You attend a lot of conferences that are generally behavior based and mm-hmm. also attend podcast conferences too, for obvious reasons. Um, yeah. what's a consistent takeaway that you are learning from each one you go to? Uh, networking, like you're, you spend a lot of money to get to them, so you need to soak up every possible opportunity you can when you're there. That's probably the biggest thing. So I always try to beforehand do like three to 12 hours of research beforehand of who's there, where they're going to be, um, what they're talking about, and those sort of things. And that's that could be, you know, like I watch a YouTube video every week for uh, 12 weeks leading up to it, right? It's not like I just binge that out sometimes. Sometimes I do. I would say, I would say, yeah, maximizing it. And that's one of the things that it took me a while to like, not be afraid to go tell someone like you like their work or have a question for them. And everyone at the end of the day is there for the same reason. They enjoy the topic. So it's just like hard to push the like, get used to, but it's just go talk to people and meet more people. So I think it's network as much as you can. Other than why we do what we do, what are other podcasts that you have been tuning into to learn more about the subject. I've been really enjoying Startup. Uh, I think it's a Gimlet podcast, and so it's all business-based. It was originally started as a guy just documented the process of him starting up his business, but then it's grown into much, much more. There's a TV show that was just announced, I think, yesterday that's spinning off. Of, like they're, they're starting up a TV series. And so that one's been really useful. And then I really enjoyed 99% Invisible by Roman Mars. Um, it is all about architecture and design. And it sounds like something I'd never be interested in, and most people wouldn't. I would but, love that. Yeah, he's looking at the very small intricacies of, like, what goes into those things. So, um, And then there's usually some sort of cultural significance. Um, and then they're relevant today's, today, to today's climate as well. Um, so, yeah. Like, one of them was on uh, the, the way in which 
So you'll have things like, he'll make a story so interesting about the little things of like why door handles are shaped a certain way. And you're like, I don't, I don't know why, you know, like, I don't care to like analyze that, but when you put it together, you're like, okay, I enjoy thinking about this. And it's very well produced and uh, thorough and all that sort of stuff. So okay. yeah, 99 PI. Okay. My interest has been piqued. I, I, <laughs> I have a thing for architecture and buildings, not necessarily door handles, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Coming out of left field here, but I'm, but we're going to go for it anyway. So you are a natural storyteller and a solid Taylor Swift fan. And if you were, yeah. <laughs> if you were going to have a chance to sit down and, and interview her about how she's crafted her marketing and become a self-made personality, what would mm -hmm. be the topic of conversation that you would choose? Uh, I feel like we talked about this before. Maybe not. Um, we did I because know... you kind of somewhat answered in the email, but I was like, I want to talk that? about it. Um, I don't like... remember. <laughs> I don't remember what I said, but what I would say now is, uh, I really want to know those people's like day to day lives. Like, how is it structured? You know, like how do you enjoy your how do you get your alone time? How do you enjoy your time with your fans? How do you engage with them? Like, what's being delegated? How do you make sure that that's properly set up? If there's one thing that's really cool, it's like, the reason I like to look at those things also from a behavioral perspective is there's this uh, culture around that, right? Like, when she removed uh, all of her Instagram pictures overnight, it was like on tabloids everywhere, you know? And it's like, holy cow. Um and obviously those things are planned and they're not leaked and it's just, I would like to get in conversations like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Like what's, what's the details? Yes. You've been in the industry for about 10 years, if mm -hmm. I counted correctly. In a way, you are just getting started. And you've mentioned in the Why We Do What We Do podcast uh, about how ever since Aristotle, like that era, basically the topic of conversation of behavioral science Mm -hmm. that the industry as a whole hasn't made much of a progress in regards to that. And yeah. I'm wondering what your North Star is for the industry. Cool. Yeah, so that's, that's a perspective taken by many behavioral scientists. And I just want to throw that out there. Some people totally, like that'd be a hot topic with some people in different areas of psychology. Okay. Um, but yeah, I would argue that it hasn't advanced nearly as much as it could have given the amount of time and effort that we've thrown into these things. Now, that's not to say that that work wasn't good. It's just uh, we need to learn from it and move forward. So where it's heading, uh, I would say where I hope it heads and where I think it's heading based on research publications and such is getting a little bit more, I would say, what's the word? kind of like complete, like looking at the whole, all of the variables and influences that are happening. So it's not just the mind. It's not just the brain. It's not just your history, right? It's not just the way your biology and your genes are set up. It's all of those things coming together is, is what's starting to happen. And so one that's, one term that's used a lot there is people like, oh, it depends, or it's contextual. It means like, it depends on the context, right? And so that seems like a cop-out, but it is all contextual and all those things come together. And so the research is heading that way in psychology over the last like hundred years. And it seems to be cool. like it leads you into, so you can go from the philosophy of like, why is this stuff happening? But you, if you think of it that way, you can lead to uh, the end goal is things like, hey, this works under these circumstances with these people. Um, to this degree, right? And that's something that's useful for people. You and I could use that in our life, like self-awareness, right? Yes. But if it's just focusing on one area, um, let's say like it's just the brain, like I can't necessarily control all those sort of things and those things are all influencing each other. So I like to see it be more complete, if that makes sense. What's one thing that you started building in 2017 that you're super pumped to just continue building momentum on in 2018? Man. So, launched a YouTube channel called The Daily BA. Is that the one you were thinking of? That, no. and then, I mean, you, I, I think you have more behind the scenes that you're building than, than yeah. I, than so, I <laughs> so, 
I'm interested in pulling this stuff together and helping the community out more, largely in our field. So there's about 50,000 or so people that are very into analysis. So behavior analysis, largely the community of certificates that are tied to some sort of degree, whether that's a high school level up to a doctor level. The community of behavior analysis is, like if we look at certificates, there's about 55,000 people from high school to doctor level that are in the I want to try to, A, have fun, create things that I'm interested in myself and put it out there. But B, I want to see if I can create something useful for that community with the community, so involve them as much as they can. And I don't think there's uh, the time, I'm, the one I'm putting the most time into right now is the Daily BA, and it's it's that. I want to see, and I, the Daily Behavior Analyst is kind of the, the and then playing off of badass there, obviously. Uh, <laughs> um and so, yeah, that's like the one that I want to see. Like, I'm most interested in like where it goes. The data is very interesting. I'm looking at it, um, but I'm working on another project that just isn't ready to really put out there too much. That would be technology of uh, getting some people in the tech world that work on machine learning, and then looking at our data from our field and crunching that. There's a lot of data in psychology that's just not being looked at, aggregated okay. in, a, in a big data fashion. And we're really good at looking at the micro. We need to look at the macro down. And so I hope in quarter four of the year we can have enough data to say, hey, this is what, and this is kind of our MVP, like our minimum viable product. And so that was being worked on a lot behind the scenes. Is there anything else that you wanted to maybe cover that I didn't ask something that was just kind of a topic that you wanted to talk about that I just didn't ask. Yeah. Um, so theories, like what's the intention? Where is it going? With what? You cut out again. Theory. It's the series that you're doing. The series, the series that I'm doing. Yeah, and where it's going. Where is it going? What's, you know, the series. Get people together to talk, work, work on, you know, editing things together, but like, what's what's keeping you going on it what's keeping me going is i've i've had a i've had an interest in interviewing people for a long time and i actually started this project a long time ago but i never really fell through with it and the title of it at the time was called what does that job title even mean and it was a phone conversation that i was having with people and i it was the same concept of coming up with 10 questions and then researching their background, who they are, and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it was okay, but it I, I don't think I had enough. I didn't have a plan, and that's part of the problem. When you don't have a plan, and I just wrote a blog post about this the other day, when you don't have a plan, then you're, you're, the, the ship's going to sink. If, if you're not building yeah. it correctly, then you can't, you can't sail. And the people that I'm interviewing have been in my circle of network for gosh anywhere from like two months to 15 years and cool. it's people that are really engaging in their fields and and doing things that are they're not just engaging but they're actually able to create a conversation that piques the interest of multiple people. It's not just a one-off article where you read it and go, hey, those were cool numbers. Okay, file that away for later on. It's, yeah. it's people who are creating the conversations of, hey, there's, a thing, there's this thing that's going on. Here's why it matters. Oh, P.S., here's the community of where it's happening in, and here's where mm -hmm. we think the conversation is growing and, and going to. And so I'm picking people for this series based on that idea of community, and I also have a life acronym that I use. It's uh, the letters are C C I V P V. I will link that as well because that stands for something. And it, the first letter in it is actually stand. The first C stands for community. The second okay. word stands for commonality. And to give you a little bit of a teaser, the I stands for identity, also known as brand identity. Yeah. Um, and being able to validate yourself and in what you're doing and your interests and being able to drive your career into the, the direction of, hey, in five years from now, I see myself doing this, but who knows what could happen between, 
you know, now, even in the next six yeah. months. So that's why I'm doing this. It's, it's an all encompassing idea of there's all these people out there that I'm connected to, but having this, typically I would love for it to be a face to face. Cause I feel like there's more conversation that can happen from that, yeah. but you have to, you know, pick and choose what, you know, you want to spend your money on. And right now I can't fly sure. around the world to do this. So yeah. I'm, I'm choosing to, I, I, I titled it big talk, small world, pure intuition, because the big talk portion comes from the idea that there are people that are experts in what they're doing. Um, small world, the older we get, the smaller the world becomes. Mm -hmm. And pure intuition is because we all have this, this gut feeling of, okay, I think I'm supposed to be doing this, which is why I asked you about the, the self-awareness piece. Yeah. And so that's how it all comes together. And I believe that sharing this knowledge with other people will be able to help them drive their conversations in their industries, whether or not it really, whether or not the actual topic of the people that I'm interviewing for this actually relates to their industry. I, I think yeah. from, from a whole perspective, it'll, it, it'll drive the conversation for them in, a, in, in its own way for them to, to drive. So cool. that's what I'm doing. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, no, I love it. It's okay. just like, it's like me starting up that YouTube channel this year. Like it's 40 hours of work easy a week that I don't get paid for. So it's like when I'm seeing people do this sort of stuff too, it's just like, why are you, why are you doing this? Like, it's awesome. <laughs> um, it is. But there's not a lot of people that do that, you know? There's not. And the people that are willing to do it and are willing to try it, even if, they might stumble in the process, which I've already done and I've already learned 15 different things from only, I think this is my sixth interview, maybe seven. Yeah. Um, I've already learned a ton and I've already learned better how to perhaps carry myself on camera. I'm not doing a great job of that right now, but you know, <laughs> th th these are things that you learn from and sure. I'm having fun with it. And I think that that's what matters and that's what counts. Cool. Yeah. That's always first and foremost. It is. Rad. Yeah. Anything else? That's all. Okay. Think, yeah. All right. I'm going to end this, but hang on. We'll talk offline. But...